okay so this lecture we talk about cache code amplifiers the same numbers as before uh, a cache code is a common source stage followed by a common gate stage one sometimes says that a common source cascaded by a common gate but that uh, i don't like that terminology because cascade means something different so common source stage is the input is applied to the gate of a transistor the output is taken at the drain the output of the common source at the drain is applied to the source of another transistor which is a common gate state because the input is at the source and the output is taken at the drain all right so this m1 m2 form the basic cache code structure a common source followed by a common gate uh, we've done uh, dc analysis of a similar circuit back in lecture 10 so i'm not doing the dc analysis here we'll directly jump to the ac analysis and we want to specifically find the voltage gain vo over v in and the r out of this uh, circuit so you please pause and find it yourself before continuing all right so this is the small signal circuit so the input is at the gate of m1 this is the m1 small signal gm1 vg1 and vg1 is equal to v in ro1 that is connected to m2 and m2 is a common gate state so the gate is at ground the current source is gm2 vs vs where vs is this voltage and uh, the gate is zero and then ro2 and this is a peculiar circuit because let us go back uh, i have connected an ideal current source here and in a small signal circuit an ideal current source becomes an open circuit so the output node in the ac circuit is open looking up this is peculiar because it is a completely unrealistic no there is no ideal current source that exists but it simplifies our first analysis of the circuit so i'm left i'm leaving it here uh, so as a result the fact that there is no current flowing up from the vo node means that if you look at this uh, gm to vs and ro2 if you are to enclose that is a super node no current is going up therefore no current can go down also and therefore this id has to be zero in this circuit the nice thing is that as a result the equations become very very simple so that is why i'm using it so if the id is zero no current flows here which means that this gm1 vg1 is circulating in this loop and then gm2 vs is circulating in this loop so if you look at uh, let's see what I have done here. We are, so let's look at this first. So Vs is simply Gm1 Vg1 into Ro1 with a negative sign because this current is flowing up. And so Vs is uh, just the voltage drop across Ro1. So that is minus Gm1 Ro1 V in. And in this loop, the voltage Vo minus Vs, which is this, is equal to this current into Ro2. So Vo minus Vs is gm2 ro2 into vs and so we can solve this for vo so take the vs on the other side so you get v equal to 1 plus gm2 ro2 vs and then vs is here minus gm1 ro1 v in so we get vo equal to minus gm1 ro1 into 1 plus gm2 ro2 into v in and if we ignore the one then we get approximately vo equal to minus gm1 ro1 times gm2 ro2 into v in which effectively is the square of a gm ro so from a common source amplifier we had gotten a gain of gm ro the cache code promises us to give a gain that is a square of a gm ro so if our common source was giving us a hundred then a cache code would give us hundred times hundred which is ten thousand which is wonderful so uh, we almost reached our goal but uh, not quite we'll see later uh, the uh, complications to this uh, all right one small comment this one comes with the common gate stage you remember you may remember that the gain of a common gate had a uh, 
the GM RO term and then another small term that was added to it. Anyway, it's really not relevant, the one term. Okay, so we can write this in this form, right? So because the GM1 RO1 is 1 over V O V1 lambda 1 as we have seen before and GM2 RO2 is 1 over V O V2 lambda 2. So this becomes the, in fact, the highest possible gain one can get from a cascode circuit. Highest possible because we had assumed an ideal current source. If that is not ideal, this gain is going to reduce. All right. Uh, let us find R out for this circuit. We had actually derived R out for this circuit, uh, not for this circuit, but a very similar circuit where the bottom was not a transistor but a resistor and if you think about it this ac circuit from the uh, for the question of finding the resistance looking into the output node looking down the thevenin's resistance is the same as the thevenin's resistance for a circuit where this m1 is replaced by a resistor because to find the thevenin's resistance we'll make the independent source zero so vn will become zero and then gm1 vg1 will go away and r will be left with is ro1 all right so if we are left with ro1 then we had derived this in an earlier lecture so we just write the expression the r out is ro1 plus ro2 plus gm2 ro2 ro1 all right so that is our output resistance which is approximately equal to gm2 ro1 ro2 or gm2 RO2, RO1 and please remember this because we will keep on using this expression for the output resistance of a CAS code. Alright, so we a couple of notes. So the reason the CAS code achieves a high gain is because it has a high output resistance. Alright, one can roughly, not exactly, but roughly say that the voltage gain of this circuit is uh, the gm1 of the driver transistor into r out this is somewhat a consequence of norton's theorem but i am leaving this as homework for you uh, but le let us assume that it is, is roughly correct it is not exact but it is approximately correct so we get a high gain because the r out of a cas code is very high it is this uh, but for the same reason as we will see maybe after three or four weeks or so uh, a large output resistance or a large Thevenin's resistance also causes a large time constant and then a low frequency pole which means that the frequency response of cascodes is slow because of this output resistance. Alright, but right now we will not worry about it. Okay, now let us uh, think about how we will uh, build an actual cascode circuit because this is an ideal current source and we don't have ideal current source available to us. So we say well we want to replace this current source with some transistors that will act like current sources. So we say uh, well of course a transistor in saturation acts like a good current source. So we will shall replace this current source with a transistor in saturation. Now because this is a transistor we want to connect from 3 volts to a node it we cannot connect an NMOS here uh, uh, as a current source it has to be a PMOS we've discussed this briefly before so I'm not repeating I'm just emphasizing that a current source here has to be a PMOS in saturation so let's try putting a PMOS here so M1 M2 and we'll put a PMOS on top so we'll say okay M1 M2 and now we'll put a PMOS on top and we'll bias it uh, such that the currents are equal and uh, the M3 is in saturation and then this should work as a cast code. So let us find the voltage gain of this circuit. And as I just said, the voltage gain of this circuit can be approximately written as the GM of the driver transistor into R out. And you, I'm leaving this as homework. Razavi has a discussion on this also. Uh, approximately turns out to be this. So we will leave it at that. So let us find R out for this circuit. Alright. So G, GM1 is GM1 and R out. So R out which is the resistance looking into the output is the resistance looking down in parallel with the resistance looking up. 
so we say r out is equal to r down parallel r up r down as we just saw is gm2 ro2 ro1 a gm2 ro2 ro1 and r up of course is the resistance of m3 which is ro3 so we get gm2 ro1 ro2 parallel ro3 now of course uh, gm2 ro1 ro2 is much much greater than ro3 therefore in parallel combination this will be approximately equal to R ro3 and therefore the gain will be minus gm1 times r out 1 which is ro3 so we get the gain of this circuit to be gm1 ro3 but this is only the gain of a common source amplifier it is not a gain we are looking for for a cash code we want the cash code gain to be a square of this number or this expression so what do we do clearly we want r out to be larger and r out is becoming small because the r up is small so if you want to make r out large we have to make r up large and how do we make r up large the way we make r up large is again put a cash code on top we put two transistors m3 m4 so that r up also becomes large all right therefore this is our circuit so we have m1 m2 and then we have m3 m4 now the resistance looking up is gm3 ro3 ro4 and that is comparable in value to the resistance looking down gm2 ro2 ro1 and so we get the gain to be minus gm1 into this parallel this so if all the gms and ro's are equal this is of the order of gm ro squared by 2 which is still a square and so this is a nice large gain compared to a common source amplifier all right this circuit is called a telescopic cash code a telescopic cash code is a cash code where the common source stage and the common gate stage are made with the same type of transistor so here both are nmos incidentally we could up for the same circuit instead of applying the input signal here at m1 we can apply it at m4 also and it will work equally well as a telescopic cash code circuit except of course that the gain then will be gm4 times the same r out all right so even with the input at m4 this will be a telescopic cash code because the common source and the common gate are the same type of transistor there is another type of cash code as you can imagine which is called a folded cash code where the common source and the common gate stage are made from different types of transistors so one is n one is p or one is p and the other is n this is called a folded cash code so i'd like you to pause and draw the circuit for a folded cash code with an nmos input so the common source stage is an nmos and the common gate stage is a pmos uh, it's a good exercise it will make you think and also understand how to draw uh, cash codes okay so let us think about it so we start with an nmos so this is our common source amplifier we apply the input to the gate of the m1 and the source is grounded the output is taken at the drain of m1 now we want the output to be connected to the source of a pmos and take the output of that common gate at the drain of the pmos so we want a source connected to m1 and the output at the drain of that pmos so this is what we do so this is a m2 which is a pmos so the source of m1 is connected i'm sorry the drain of m1 is connected to the source of uh, m2 and the output is taken at the drain of m2 so there has to be a load here because uh, my output can't be floating and that load will have to be a cash code as we just saw so right now i'm just putting a current source but the current source will have to be a cash code uh, and the output would be taken at the drain of m2 so this is a folded cash code circuit but if i were to just hook up this circuit 
that actually nothing will happen. No current will flow anywhere. Well, I mean, the, uh, ideal current source and all notwithstanding, currents will not flow. Why is that? Because this M1 requires that a current flow down in the transistor. This M2 is a PMOS, the current will needs to flow from the source to the drain. So both these currents are flowing down. How can both the currents be flowing down, right? KCL gets into trouble if both currents need to flow down. And if this current is flowing up, uh, then some gutbud happens, all right? So this is not a complete folded cascode circuit. To make it complete, we need to provide a source of current coming down. In fact, there is no VDD in this circuit, right? So where is VDD connected? So this is the folded cascode circuit. So folded cascode needs an additional current source from VDD to this uh, output of the first stage or the common source stage and the input of the common gate state. So this is a folded cascode circuit, all right? And this is a transistor level folded cascode circuit. So M1, M2, and then, then this current source has to be a cascode uh, because we just saw that. So that is an N and that has to be an NMOS cascode because this is down going to ground. So we have M3 and 4 that is an NMOS cascode. Up here is another current source and this has to be a PMOS current source is because it's coming down from VDD. But here one doesn't need two transistors, one or uh, doesn't need a cascode, a single transistor is sufficient. So you think about why, all right. Uh, maybe by the end of this lecture you would have figured out but you think about why a cascode is not necessary at this node a single transistor current source is sufficient all right let us continue so the next thing we are going to do is we are going to do a small exercise of designing this folded cascode circuit so that will bring out a lot of issues so let's we take this circuit and say okay now we want to design it that means we want to find all the DC gate voltages VG 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the W's by L's of the all the 5 transistors or W's, L is given, so W's of the 5 transistors. So 5 voltages, 5 W's. The specifications we have to meet are basically just 2. This L is a given. Uh, is that the currents in both the branches so there's one branch here, one branch here, both should be one milliampere and the voltage gain should be about minus 8000. So from input to output, the voltage gain is minus 8000. These currents are one milli, one milli. So of course the current in M5 will be two milliamperes because that half of it goes to one branch and the other half goes to the other branch. All right. So you Again, pause and try this and please spend some time. This will take time. This is one of the most important and also one of the most not easy designs that in fact you will do this semester. Uh, so please spend a lot of time, not some time, trying to design this yourself. And after that you continue. Then you will probably appreciate the design more if you've tried it yourself. All right, so let's got to get on with it. So as I have said before, designs are best started with the gain specification. All right, so you start by writing an expression for the gain specification, equating it to the value given and then trying to find all the various values from that gain expression. For this circuit, we have to actually first find the gain expression because we haven't really found the gain expression. So we say, okay, V O by V in is approximately minus G M 1 into R out. That one we'll take for granted, but we have to find an expression for R out. So this is output node. So we say R out is equal to R down in parallel with R up. R down as we have already seen is G M 3, R O 3, R O 4. So we say R out is R down, R up. R down is G M 3, R O 3, R O 4. How much is R up? R up is tricky. This is still a kind of a cascode. 
all right so we say okay r up is gm2 ro2 times the resistance looking up from the source node which i have called rx so the r up is gm2 ro2 into rx all right i hope you can see that now how much is rx rx is the resistance of m5 in parallel with the resistance of m1 so this is ro5 this is ro1 therefore r up is gm2 ro2 gm2 ro2 into ro1 parallel ro5 all right so this of course is a smaller quantity than gm ro ro because there is a parallel combination here all right so generally speaking assuming all gms are equal r up of a folded cascode will be smaller than the r down of a folded cascode all right so this is x okay so let's put it all this together gm1 r down r up uh, so we'll get gm1 r down r up then we write all these gms in terms of 2 id over v o v r o is 1 over lambda id so we'll get gm1 is 2 id 1 over v o v 1 gm3 is 2 id id 3 over v o v 3 and i have cancelled one id here and uh, r o 3 r o 4 r 1 over i lambda id so lambda squared id squared and one id is cancelled similarly gm2 ro2 is 1 over v o v 2 lambda 2 and then ro1 parallel ro5 is 1 over lambda 1 id 1 plus lambda 5 id 5 all right for our case uh, our all our lambdas are equal and they are all equal to 0.05 so we can take this lambda out the ids are also equal uh, well not id1 is equal to id2 and id5 is equal to id1 plus id2 so we substitute all of that and we also note that uh, these are two parallel resistances and so their conductances will add and so these two bottom the denominators basically simply add because they are conductances and so we get 2 id over v o v we take the lambda squared out so that is lambda squared out v o v 3 id 2 plus v o v 2 and then id 1 plus id 5 all right the lambdas are gone and then id 5 is equal to id 1 plus id 2 so this becomes 2 id 1 plus id 2 and then we combine the id 2s id 1s uh, didn't need to do this actually because id 1 is equal to id 2 and so we can take the id1 out that id1 cancels with this id1 and so we'll get and this 2 comes out so we get 4 over v o v1 lambda squared into 1 divided by 3 v o v2 so 2 from here 1 from here plus v o v3 and then lambda is 0.05 we are given so 4 over 0.05 squared is 1600 a uh, divided by v o v 1 and the same thing and we are given that this gain must be minus 8000 all right so this is one equation we get so let us look at this so so we say 3 v o v 1 plus i'm sorry 3 o v o v 2 plus v o v 3 must be equal to 1600 by 8000 which is 1 by 5 which is 0.2 So we get this expression v o v one into three v o v two plus v o v three is equal to zero point two. Now, of course, there are too many variables, so we just kind of uh, guess possible values uh, or put reasonable values and hope that the design will turn out okay. This is actually a very simple design, and therefore these numbers are not too critical. So we say, well, let v o v one be equal to point two volts. we don't know what it will be but let's make it 0.2 volts because it seems reasonable here so if we make vov 1.2 then the 0.2 point to cancel and we need 3 of vov 2 plus vov 3 equal to 1 volt which seems reasonable so we say okay so that 0.2 is good 
and then we say well we don't know what vovs we want to use so let us make all of them point to volts all five overdrive voltages of all five transistors let them be point to volts and so then we get three vov plus vov so four vov equal to one and we say okay uh, if i make all vov is point two then three vov plus vov becomes point eight which is less than one and therefore this should be okay because if this is less than one so let's go back actually if this is less than one then this will be greater than eight thousand and any gain greater than eight thousand we are happy so we say well point two is a nice number so let's make everything point two or it's all vovs we are saying are point two now given VOVs, let us find the gate voltages. So let's say VG1 and VG4, which because both of them have sources grounded. So we can say these are equal to the VOV, which is 0.2 plus the threshold voltage of 0.4, so 0.6 volts. So we found these two, or we've determined the gate voltages of 1 and 4. Similarly, 5, the source voltage is known. So we can find the gate voltage because so we are saying the overdrive is 0.2, the threshold is 0.4. So this has to be 2.4 volts, right? 3 point minus 0.2 minus 0.4. So if determined the gate voltages of M1, M4 and M5. M2, M3 are a little more tricky. So let's think about them. Why? Because the sources are not connected to either ground or VDD. So let's look at VG3, this voltage. VG3 is equal to VGS3 plus VDS4. All right, there are two voltages here VDS4 and VGS3. So it's a VGS3 plus VDS4. VGS3, up the same equation holds because VGS minus VT is equal to VOV and VOV is 0 0.2, VT is 0 0.4. So we say VGS3 is equal to 0 0.2 plus 0.4. So VG3 is equal to 0.6 plus VDS4. So there is a there has to be a 0.6 here. We've discussed this before. So this voltage has to be 0.6 because it is the same as this voltage. But the VG has to be 0.6 plus the voltage across the drain source of M4. All right. So we get this equation. Now what do we do about VGS4? So let's think about V. I'm sorry, VDS4. So in fact, VG3 will decide VDS4. So if I make VG3 high, uh, so let us, uh, this is a revision actually. So this is 0.6, this is 0.6. So let us say I make VG3 equal to one volt. Then this is 0.6 and this VD will be one minus 0.6 equal to 0.4 volts. Let us say I make this 0.7 volts. Then 0.7 minus 0.6, then this will be 0.1 volt. All right, so VG3, whatever value we'll put, will determine what this drain voltage of M4 is. All right, so let's think about what value of the drain voltage we need for M4. Now, there are two considerations here. One, which you would have hopefully noticed from your table of the first assignment, is that as the drain source voltage of a MOSFET increases, the lambda of that transistor decreases all right the higher the drain voltage the lower the lambda and the lower lambda means a higher gain which is good so to get a higher gain we want a higher vd of a transistor but as vd4 increases the lowest voltage required at the output to keep M3, M4 in saturation also increases. And that means that the overall output voltage swing of this amplifier decreases, which is of course not good. So you think about why this is true, why as VD4 increases, VOMIN also increases, okay? Uh, I'll leave it for now. So therefore, the choice of VG3, which determines VD4 is a trade-off between getting a lower lambda and therefore a higher voltage gain versus getting a high output voltage swing. So one uh, decides which one, which value one chooses so that a trade-off is obtained. 
Now for our design incidentally, the one we are doing right now, lambda is a constant. So we really don't need to worry about lambda changing with VDS. So we will not worry about it because this is a design on paper. So given that we say well let us choose VD4 this voltage here as the overdrive of M4 uh, which is a minimum required at VD4 plus a small value so that some swing is allowed when then input uh, AC voltage is applied. So we say plus 0.1. So we say well let VD4 be 0.3 and then VGS3 we already saw is 0.6. So we will make VG3 as 0.6 plus 0.3 equal to 0.9 volts. Alright so that gives us VG3. Now let us think about VG2 which is somewhat similar. Uh, so we say well uh, so VG2 determines VS2 which is the source drain voltage of M5. So we say well let us make this voltage slightly lower because this is a PMOS than the overdrive voltage required for M5 and so we say 3 minus VSD5 which is a source strain minus VSG2 which we have decided already to be 0.6. So we make VSD5 as 0.3 the same as VDS4 and so we get VG2 equal to 2.1 volt. Alright, so that ha with this we have determined all the gate voltages, the DC gate voltages of the 5 transistors. Uh, we have also determined the overdrive voltages. The current is given. So now the only thing remaining is the W's and the W's can be determined from the drain current equation uh, by rewriting. So the W is 2L divided by mu and C ox V overdrive squared into the drain current which is 1 milliamp. And so we can find the widths of all the transistors and it turns out that the actual numbers are W134, 134 are 125 micrometers, W2 which is a PMOS so it is different will be double of the 125 so 250 and the M5 which carries double the current of all the other transistors will be double of this so that will be 500 micrometers. Alright so that actually completes our design or at least we think it has completed our design as I have said before we must verify that this design actually does meet all the specifications given in our case that the drain currents are 1 milliamp here and here and the overall voltage gain is 8000. So I am leaving this to you as an exercise. Take this circuit, you know all the gate voltages, you know all the W's and L's. Find the drain currents and find the voltage gain and verify that our design is correct. Alright, okay. so that finishes this lecture. Next lecture we will talk about current mirrors which is the next chapter.